Pastor Tom Mullins. I'm the pastor of Lexa and Marvel United Methodist Churches uh, here in Phillips County, Arkansas. Arkansas Delta or the Mississippi Delta uh, on the Arkansas side of the river uh, just west of Helena, West Helena. We are uh, on chapter 11 in the, uh, as we're going through the Bible and reading those and sharing the chapters a day, uh, Monday through Friday, but we're doing the uh, Judges chapter 11 today, and then from our hymnal, we're going to share with you, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus is number 196. Uh, the chapter is a little bit longer today than yesterday's was kind of short. The one before that was kind of long. Um, I don't know the monk when he was making the chapters and verses so many years ago, uh, how he kind of broke down things and different stuff uh, is kind of odd because sometimes it seems like uh, some of the chapters that we've read in the past have been kind of like half cut in the middle or a few uh, sentences within one or in the next chapter and different stuff. And I try to make that uh, distinction and to be able to share that in a way that uh, makes our stories consistent and, and, the, and the telling of the, of the uh, you know, the grouping of that in that manner, in that way. Uh, I am always uh, or continually uh, coming to this Thou Long Expected Jesus today to come Thou Long Expected Jesus that we're going to share. Uh, I've heard that for many years. The one we did yesterday was Send Your Word, which uh, both of them are very well worded and very well uh, thought out. Uh, you know, I'm I am amazed by people that can do music and both lyrics and uh, the melodies and the and the songs themselves. And uh, I think that's pretty much a, a, a integral part of what it is to be um, th within our uh, context of our worship and stuff and in the West, or as they say, in, in the uh, global North is what we learned about is like Europe and uh, 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 in North America, but also uh, that influence goes to places like New Zealand and Australia and, and different uh I don't know exactly how I want to say that, but I guess that are, that are influenced by the idea of the, the British Empire and uh, things that went along with that. Uh, both Germany, France, and, and uh, England, uh, both Germany and France, in addition to England, uh, have an influence uh, worldwide uh, throughout the Africa, the continent of Africa, and also through the continent of South America and, and then in Central America as well. The influence of the different uh, nations and, and of Europe uh, on the world is just quite uh, truly amazing. It was said at one time that the British Empire, that the Union Jack, which is their flag, uh, never, uh, never was taken down. It flew over the entire world, someplace within every time zone and every every uh, location as far as that goes. It was a, there and present in that hemisphere or that uh, section of the world or the country. Um, I, uh, we're having our uh, Breakthrough Youth tonight, five to seven. We're gonna have, uh, they're gonna bring it over from the fair. Uh, we're supposed to have hamburgers, cheeseburgers. We're gonna have that for our meal and then the activities uh, that we'll have and be a part of that. I believe we're kind of in, not in conflict, but scheduling conflict with uh, the uh, the scholarship pageant or whatever. It's not really a scholarship pageant. It's one of those things that they kind of move that along. But the beauty pageant uh, for the uh, naming of the queens of the fair uh, time for the Tri-County. Uh, here in Marvel, we'll be having that. We have the Crash Up Derby or the Demolition Derby coming up on Thursday, I think it is. So uh, just want to keep all the uh, the drivers and things for that. We've I enjoy going to that, but I... I worry I don't want anyone to be hurt or anyone to be harmed either in the audience or among the, the athletes that drive the cars and the, and the crews and different things that go along because uh, things happen and then unexpected things kind of happen in that way. But we want to be able to enjoy the rides, enjoy the uh, just the uh, display of, of our, our youth and their talents and the things that go on with a fair that brings uh, folks from all around uh, into that be able to share that time of family and, and everything. We want to pray for safety and, and all that's going on. I am um, uh, working, we're still working on the paperwork. You'll have meetings 
and different things that are going on for our charge conference. We want to be able to lift that up. And as we continue in uh, the um, doing all of that, I, it's kind of monotonous in some ways, but it's good to do the business of the church, to know that we're stable and that we can go and do mission and not have to worry about um, the... Uh, I used to call them, and probably still do from time to time, call them begathons, and uh, I just don't think that's that's very, it's kind of, uh, it's not being uh, very humble when you have to go out and beg and say, you know, pray about it, you know, pray about what your gift or your giving is and what you're giving it to, the mission and the ministry of your local ministry, and, 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 and be generous and be a cheerful giver as as, as uh, scripture talks about i thought it was funny i had been at um i guess about three years serving the plainview united methodist church over in yale county arkansas and uh when i was there and uh did a sermon and it was on stewardship and uh i'd been there for about three years and one of the older gentlemen in, in the uh congregation come up to me afterwards he said i knew that eventually you would get around to, to you know about money and uh and different things like that i said well you know i think that people should be prayed up about that that's like when we go to vote when we go to vote we should pray about making good decisions and different things and i think that applies as well to our um the uh the godliness that comes from stewardship because god told us that we are you know we are stewards of the earth but to use that money and to use it wisely for the building of the kingdom is what it is because all things belong to god and we're supposed to give a hundred percent which sounds a little bit ridiculous that we would give everything we have away. But some of the most um, uh, victorious type folks in, in, the, in Christendom, all the way back, even into the days of the Old Testament, those folks, uh, the ones that were willing to sacrifice something in order to get, and to get the gain that comes from knowing eternal peace and, 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 and prosperity that is way beyond all the money in the world that you could have, and to have that, that peace of mind and different things that go along with that as well. So um, I want to welcome you. If you've not been with us before, we've been doing this for about three years uh, in the context of the uh, Osceola. And then uh, actually we started this at McGee, in McGee down in Deshea County uh, when I was serving there during the COVID uh, crisis. We had just moved from Osceola it kind of settled in it was uh, uh advent and uh the first advent that we had there and we're sharing with them in 2018 i'm sorry in 2020 not 2018 28 uh, 2018 was when we started and uh had graduated from when i had graduated from uh, seminary and began at osceola but in 2020 during covid we moved to down there and then uh after two years there we moved to Marshall Leslie and served those churches for one year and then uh, now we're back and we're back here in the Delta again went from the Delta to the mountains back to the Delta so it's the the uh, movement that caused uh, caused by the ripple effect of, of both COVID and the uh, disaffiliation process that's going on and everything but we want to make sure we lift up our prayers and thoughts for those folks as well anyone suffering injury or illness I uh uh, there was quite a bit of activity over the weekend and into the beginning of the week uh, some gun violence and different things that were going on but also some speed uh, police chases speed chases uh, some different things that heard on the news and different stuff but then we also have the 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 natural death I guess as what for lack of a better term I was gonna say is that we had the idea and remember that um, you know folks expire they get to an age where their bodies are worn out and uh, whether it be from injury or illness uh, but sometimes our uh, you know the body just the physical body just can't maintain uh, the life that uh, we expect and different stuff like that so we want to think about people that are in re rehabilitation places uh, nursing homes uh, long-term care facilities of that, that nature and type um, Pray for their comfort, pray for their healing, and pray for their recovery to be quick and complete. And we will do that as well, as we know we serve the great physician and know that he is, is capable of doing all things. 
Um, I think that's about all I have really for uh, that's going on. We got the harvest going on, people. Uh, you know, uh, down the street here, uh, down the highway anyway, uh, going towards Poplar Grove. Saw the folks out there uh, that were. Uh, we, we called it, we had potatoes and stuff, we called it, you know, graveling potatoes, but, um, you know, being able to pick it up, put it in buckets, run to the thing, and uh, it's kind of the manual labor that's involved with that was pretty amazing, so I uh, want to pray for those folks that are out in the weather and out into the environment and different things that uh, they are successful in doing the things that they've uh, been hired to do, but also to do that with, uh, with much success. Uh, for them and for their uh, uh, the companies that they work for and stuff and the people that they work for um, so let us pray dear heavenly father we thank you for the graciousness that you bestow upon us we thank you for the health and the and and the things that are going on in our lives knowing that there are those that suffer injury and illness we ask that they be lifted up into your care both of their minds, their bodies, and their and and just to be able to be with them, to have that comforting spirit, to have that healing spirit that moves along aside us when we are going about the business of being being human, being able to move forward and being able to move upward as we go about being your disciples. Help us to be able to love and to care for others, even those that maybe are not so lovely or not so kind to us, that they would be heaped upon them the same uh, blessing and gratitude that you have given us that we would give to those around us that forgiving spirit that is just uplifting and is kind and it's in its manner and in its way of doing things we ask for your blessing upon this time together as we go to your word your sacred word we ask that it be something that is inside of us something that becomes a part of us as we go out into the world a world that is hurting and lost that we might be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ without the brow beating or the pistol whipping with scripture that sometimes comes by being too aggressive. But help us to be firm in our belief. Help us to be able to share that belief in a way that is that is kind and caring and loving and, and just all of the qualities that you have for us that we would have for others. We ask for that and we ask for it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who is our Redeemer and our Savior. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you do. We thank you for your many gifts and blessings. And we ask for your, your blessing upon this time together as we go to your word, as we go to your hymnal. We just ask that, that, that the words leap from the pages and that we have this opportunity to reach out beyond our four walls to the community and the world online. And we want to let those know that are not present with us, not in the same room, not in the same sanctuary, to let them know that they are loved and that they are a part of the sanctuary that is, is overwhelming online to be able to reach out at any time and in all places. Thank you, God, for all that you do. Thank you for being our God. And we ask all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king. Born to reign in us forever, now that thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king. Born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring. 
by thine own eternal spirit, ruling all our hearts alone, by thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. And this is credited to Charles Wesley, 1744. The words are, and the music is Roland Pritchard, 1830, and the harmony from the English hymnal of 1906. All right, I uh, appreciate you being here today. I appreciate you hanging in with me. I, it, it's been kind of a, just a, a busy week. And uh, we are going to be reading and sharing with you today <clears throat> Jep, or, uh, chapter 11 from the book of Judges. Now Jephthah the Gileadite, Gileadite, the son of, of a prostitute, was a mighty warrior. Gilead was the father of Jephthah. Gilead's wife also bore him sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah away, saying to him, You shall not inherit anything in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. Outlaws collected around Jephthah and went raiding with him. After a time, the Ammonites made war against Israel. And when the Ammonites made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob. They said to Jephthah, Come and be our commander, so that we might fight with the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Are you not the very ones who rejected me and drove me out of my father's house? So why do you come to me now when you are in trouble? The elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, Nevertheless, we have now turned back to you, so that you may go with us and fight with the Ammonites, and become head over us, over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight with the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them over to me, I will be your head. And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, the Lord will be witness between us. We will surely do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead to the people made him head and commander over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. Then Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites and said, What is there between you and me that you have come to me to fight against my land? The king of the Ammonites answered the messengers of Jephthah. Because Israel, on coming from Egypt, took away my land from the Arnon to the Jabbok to the Jordan. Now therefore restore it peaceably. Once again Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites and said, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of Moab or the land of the Ammonites, but when they came up from Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Israel then sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Let us pass through your land, and the king of Edom would not listen. They also sent to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained at Kadesh. Then they journeyed through the wilderness, went around the land of Edom and the land of Moab, arrived on the east side of the land of Moab, and camped on the other side of the Arnon. They did not enter the territory of Moab, for the Arnon was the boundary of Moab. Israel then sent messengers to King Sihon of the Amorites, king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, Let us pass through your land to our country. But Sihon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory, so Sihon gathered all his people together and encamped at Jahaz and fought, the, fought with Israel. Then the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sion and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they defeated him. So Israel occupied all the land of the Amorites who inhabited that country. They occupied all the territory of the Amorites from the Arnon to the Jabbok and from the wilderness to the Jordan. So now the Lord, the God of Israel, has conquered the Amorites for the benefit of his people, Israel. Do you intend to take their place? Should you not possess what your God Shemos, or Chemos, Chemos gives you to possess? And should we not be the ones to possess everything that the Lord our God has conquered for our benefit? Now are you any better than King Balak, son of Zippor of Moab? 
did he ever enter into conflict with Israel, or did he ever go to, to war with them? While Israel lived in Hezbon and its villages, and, the, and in Aror, or Aror, and in Aror and its villages, and in all the towns that are along the Arnon, three hundred, three hundred years. Why did you not recover them within that time? It is not I who have sinned against you, but you who are the one who does me wrong by making war on me. Let the Lord who is judged decide today for the Israelites or for the Ammonites. But the king of the Ammonites did not heed the message that Jephthah sent him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh. He passed on to Mizpah of Gilead, and to Mizpah of Gilead he passed on to the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will give me the Ammonites into my hand, and whoever comes out of the doors of my house to meet, meet me when I return victorious from the Ammonites, shall be the Lord's to be offered up by me as a burnt offering. So Jephthah crossed over the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord gave him into his hand, gave them into his hands. He inflicted a massive defeat on them from Arrower to the the neighborhood of Mineth, twenty towns, and as far as Abel Keremim, Abel Keremim, Keremim, Abel Keremim. So the Ammonites were subdued before the people of Israel. Then Jephthah came to his home at Mizpah, and there was his daughter coming out to meet him with the trembles and with dancing. She was his only child. He had no son or daughter except her. When he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You have become the cause of great trouble to me, for I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I cannot take back my vow. She said to him, My father, if you have opened your mouth to the Lord, do, not, do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, now that the Lord has given you vengeance against your enemies, the Ammonites. And she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Grant me two months. And she said to her father, Let this thing be done to me, done for me. Grant me two months, so that I may go and wander on the mountains, and bewail my virginity, my companions and I. Go, he said, and sent her away for two months. So she departed, she and her companions, and bewailed her virginity on the mountains. At the end of two months, she returned to her father, who did with her according to the vow he had made. She had never slept with a man, so there arose an Israelite custom that for four days, every year, the daughters of Israel would go out to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gildai. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've heard some uh, different things about this story, about him offering his daughter as a sacrifice. Um, I don't think that I ever realized that it says uh, in his vow, uh, let's see. If you will give me the Ammonites into my hand, if you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whoever, so he knew that it was gonna be a person is, or at least that's my infliction with that. When it, whoever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return victorious from the Ammonites, shall be the Lord's to be offered up to by me, to be offered up by me as a burnt offering. So it's kind of hard to get this uh, squared away because for the most part, you know, we have the story of Isaac and Abraham and, and how uh, you know God asked that and he, and he stopped and uh, prevented him from killing his only son uh, but this here seems to kind of think that um, I really I can't make a positive twist on this like I don't know how I would say uh, but I guess at the beginning of this chapter, uh, he was the son of a prostitute, uh, but he was a mighty warrior. And, you know, uh, 
so it's amazing to see you know and then it, the way that it's worded it says uh they, they threw him away because he, he basically because he was a a, a bastard child in, in their eyes but then in the other part of that is that he was um uh, that he wouldn't inherit anything because his bore him sons. Gilead's wife also bore him sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah. So his wives, as opposed to his his prostitute's child, um, or the prostitute's child that he was the father of, and then it's like I think it's kind of crazy. I I don't know. I've never heard of the land of Tob, T O B, and and it's like I uh, and I'll be honest with you. I think it's interesting. Outlaws collected around Jephthah and went raiding with him. Uh, it sounds like the old west. It sounds like you know the the bad guy or the uh, the one that was ostracized or whatever went out and, and collected a bunch of other misfits and and uh, so you got kind of a cowboy. Uh, a story like that that goes along with that and uh, he had that temperament in different things uh, kind of like as we think about the apostle uh, Peter in the sense that uh, it was quick to react quick to do things or say things uh, that maybe he regretted and uh, I'm sure that losing this uh, what seems to be a kid that was just and enthralled with her father and, and different things and to lose a special child and your only child I can't even imagine but um, you know sometimes the stories that we have in the Bible um, I'm sure there's a purpose in there there's something that that would that question would be uh, you know we're supposed to protect our families uh, it doesn't say anything about the mother it doesn't say anything about her and stuff but uh, I think it's pretty remarkable we don't have that perspective like a modern perspective when you hit different people and different family members kind of working together uh, to be able to do the things that need to be done and, and I think that uh, that kind of gets lost in the stories over time but I think the big thing is is not not all not all the stories or all of the things that are told to us in the Bible are demonstrations of what we should do. Sometimes, like in this case, I'm thinking that this is a story of what not to do. You know, uh, if you want to take it really down deep, it would be like, uh, don't hang out with outlaws. Don't be, uh, you know, uh, don't take out revenge on folks that, that are not nice to you or not kind to you. Don't go after them and everything because if you let things go and you make it where you do the right thing, have integrity and you have the uh, disciplines that come along with that. So maybe this does kind of go in a positive light if you think of it that way. Not the events themselves, but the idea of what is behind the events. The idea that you should make a good decision. Don't be rash. Don't say I'm going to do this, you know, and promise God something out of that. Um, I don't know. I, I call it the Christmas list prayer group. Uh, the, those are the people that ask for things and never thank God for what he has done for them. And I think that's kind of what um, the victory that came with that should have been something different than him getting revenge on the ones that had kicked him out and kicked him to the curb. Uh, it should have been more than, than all of that. And it shouldn't have been so much um, his willingness to, to go back seems kind of odd. Wanting, but I think we all want that. We all want to be a part of something. We all want to be a part of what it is that makes up, uh, you know, what we think of as our roots, our home, our family. I have multiple brothers and sisters, and they're, part of them are half maternal halves, the others paternal halves, and then also have step siblings. And, uh, you know, some of them have passed, some of them moved on to the church triumphant, but others, uh, you know, have been dispersed in a diaspora that uh, goes from one end of the country to the other. And when my parents were alive, they held all that together. 
you know, people would come visit us. We would come for holidays. We would go out to the park during the summer, uh, going to uh, different places around and, uh, you know, enjoying each other's company, grilling out, barbecuing, doing all the things that families do, you know, and uh, whether we were going out to fish or hike or, or whatever it might be, but we did it in groups and we did lots of that. And it's like, I really, don't, my, like my mom never went out with us to go walking or hiking. And she never went with us to, to go uh, fishing or, or whatever that might be. But she liked to cook. And apparently, I would hope that I look back on it now and I think maybe it was just more of a, a she thought it was her responsibility or something. But, uh, you know, the truth be told, I think she enjoyed it. I think she enjoyed seeing her children around the table and talking and laughing and, and eating and, and all of that kind of thing. So uh, to have that and to have, uh, you know, this big group, I really don't know what held us together for so many years. And then when my my stepfather passed, uh, things kind of wound down. And then the final nail in the coffin, of course, was when my mom passed away. So no longer... Do we have that central location to go and to visit and to be with her and 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 uh, to go to the, to home like that and then to go from wherever uh, we were going on vacation or wherever we were going on some kind of uh, work trip or something? But we had that that base, that common base, and it's like when we lost that, and I think that's kind of what Je- uh, Jepeth was he he had lost his sense of belonging, his sense of being. A part of something and I think that when they came to ask him to come back and then from the the adrenaline the excitement of all of that the success that he had had in the past he was pretty sure of himself but he wanted to have that backup and he, instead of relying on God and just simply relying on God's grace and love he decided to make that vow that terrible vow that he would you know sacrifice whoever came out to greet him why would he not think that it would be his family? Uh, or maybe there was someone in his family that he was hoping it would be the one to come out. Uh, you know, there's always motives behind everything that we do and everything that humans do. So, uh, pretty remarkable. Um, I think that's about all I got. I was going to say, I'm just kind of thinking about things. You might want to look. I, it's nice to have, uh, I need to get that in here in the office and stuff. So, uh have maps of the times and places and some of the Old Testament to kind of realize, um, you know, it's like, excuse me, the thing that I think is funny about the Bible, like in, um, if I were to say Newport, the city of Newport, it's like, what, for me, I think Cincinnati, Newport, Kentucky, Cincinnati, uh, if you uh, say, if you think of Nashville, in Nashville, it would be that you would think Tennessee. Well, there's a Nashville, Arkansas. If you think of Cincinnati, you think of Ohio, or I think you would think of that anyway. And then it turns out that there is a Cincinnati, Arkansas. If you go to, um, if I think of, of uh, uh, Fulton, for me personally, if I think of Fulton, I think of Fulton, Missouri. But I also served in Fort Scott, Kansas, which is just south of Fulton, Kansas. So we have those different things. As we read those stories about Jericho, there's more than one Jericho. Uh, We talk about the Promised Land. Its borders move back and forth over the generations. It's a much bigger area than what is the country of Israel today. So we don't, we think of Israelis, we don't really think of them as the Israelites. You know, uh, we think of Jerusalem, we don't really think of Tel Aviv. You know, it's like, unless you are on the other side of that coin in the Muslim side, and you would think of it as Tel Aviv and not Jerusalem maybe. Um, I think it's interesting that back in history, at one point, Muslims and Jews all faced Jerusalem in their prayers three times a day or whatever it was. So, you know, you hear the stories of Daniel. He looked out the window. He faced Jerusalem. 
Because scripture tells us that if you will look to this place that God has made for himself and pray to this place and be repentative of that, God will hear you. Whether you are a, a faithful follower of God or not. And then the thing is, that he, they ask that, the, that even the prayers of the, of the, the, the Gentiles, I guess for lack of a better word, but for the other, that was non-Jewish folks, for those people that if they prayed to God, to the temple, and God answered their prayers, it would be a witness that he was God. So we have this different type of perspective of geography and topography, mountains. Mountains not only mean, um, they're not only symbolic of being the power of God and different things like that, but the church, God's church, is a mountain. All the denominations, all the different odd and, and, and um, odds and ends of, of groups of people that are a part of Christendom, yet they are the hills. The hills are less are lesser in stature than if we are the God's church first, and then we take on the theology and the practices of our denomination. It's fine, it doesn't harm anything, and it makes us group together maybe a little closer and better, but the fact is that we have those rudimentary things you must believe in Christ. You must repent and you must try to live the best life you can, accepting the grace that comes from God. By accepting that grace that comes from Him, you end up in a, in a situation of being able to do great and wonderful things. Not only that does it benefit you, but it benefits everyone around you. Look at Joseph. He was in prison and he came to the top of the crop. You know, he was in Potiphar's home and he did a great job. He was well liked, respected and stuff. We went around the south with uh, Potiphar's wife and then he was ended up in jail. But the people around him, and there's there's different stories. I can't really cite off anything right off the top of my head right now, but you can look for stories and you hear these like pagan kings and uh, and different ones that are like, you know, even Nebuchadnezzar uh, makes this, the comment that the God, the living God, the God of Israel is the one who is the one God. You know, at first he kind of makes his, his brag that he, look what all he's done and how much, how wonderful he is and all that kind of stuff. And then, but it turns around that people like Daniel uh, and Joseph and different ones made their kings and Pharaoh and, and emperors made them and do better by them. And there's even probably, I'm sure if you looked it up, you might be able to find some stories of even folks that would talk about that in different ways that uh, the strength that comes uh, from um, from having Christian folks doing things around you uh, and you being a Christian and doing things. I always thought it was funny they used to make fun of me because I read the Bible. At the, the job that I had, I was just a general laborer and cycle counter at the end of, of my career in the working in uh, logistics and uh, the thing that I thought was most amazing was they were always Father Tom how's it going Father Tom and it is sometimes they have questions but you let someone get hurt or someone die all of a sudden Father Tom became the Christian the one that they knew had a direct line to God the fact is they had a direct line to God and it was like I hope that I was able to convince them of that but I think that sometimes uh, we don't uh, we don't realize the authority and the power that we have because we talk to God, because we have a relationship with God. It doesn't make us the boss, but it does seem to, to lighten up the, uh, you know, the problems of the world for others as well as ourselves. Uh, you know, it just seems like you get hit and hit and hit. You know, you find out, you know, a loved one is sick or injured. Someone is living a life, a style that's putting them on the edge of, of death or, or destruction you uh you know all those things are going on at one time it's not just one thing you know i i love the saying of having too many irons in the fire uh, but the thing is we have to have a certain amount of, of irons in the fire and uh if we ask god's help with that we're able to manage those things and kind of do that juggling act that is possible when god is there to help you to do that things uh, but don't be rash. Don't be make promises that you you have no intention of keeping. Uh, to break a vow, 
I, I think is a, is a, is a bad thing. Um, but I, I would have to ask, uh, for me, if I were in this story, and hopefully I would have this enough, enough wisdom of this uh, to say that, you know, if I made that promise that I would give something, you know, uh, that uh, maybe I would, I, would, I would amend it. And I think God is good about helping us with that. If you, if you rashly say something, uh, don't feel that you are, that it's impossible to talk to God about that and to, and to fix that in a way. Look, I understand I was wrong. I understand that I made the decision too quick. You know the intentions of my heart. I did not mean to bring harm to my daughter. I did not bring to bring those kind of things. So let me try to make amends in a different way and but i am so thankful for you for the victory that i received the thing that's that i won only, could have only won because of you and that we need to fix this and god can't be negotiated within god's law is god's law and faithfulness but god's mercy is something that is pretty it, it it's beyond measure god's mercy and grace is beyond measure and God will give you the opportunity to fix things if you will only ask him. And that's the important part. Uh, don't go rushing in to make those rash decisions <coughs> <coughs> that, um, that you know that you're not going to keep. If you're not going to keep it, that's where the yes is yes and the no is no. Don't say it. Don't speak it. Don't even think it if you are not intending to do it or to go through with it. And, and don't want to do that. And then if you do make the mistake, make the error, ask Jesus, ask God, ask, ask the Spirit to be with you. And the Godhead itself will come to your rescue. It will make things right, make things right for you and for those around you. So uh, that's where the blessing comes from. So we have to work it out in that way. Uh, not taking something for face value, but learning from it. This person really screwed this up. <laughs> really made it an error in judgment in a way of, of, of thinking that they could uh, manipulate God into doing something and then finding out that it was like where well, the last laugh comes with how life turns out and, and the destruction that comes with that uh, and as a result of that. And um, you may have heard of it. It's called the butterfly effect. And it's one of those things that that one little ripple on this end will make everything. It's a much bigger ripple as it grows, as it goes out into the world. So uh, make your ripple be something important, something that's good for others. And good for the fact that uh, when God does something great for you, do something great for somebody else as well. You know, uh, just kind of pass along the love that comes from on high and pass it all around so that others benefit from the love that God has for them. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time as we've gathered as your church here online. We thank you for the day, the beautiful weather, the, the fact that we live in a, in a time of, of, of need, a time of loss, a time of violence, as we have from the very beginning, since the first death of, of, of Abel, uh, when he was slain, uh, slain by his brother, uh, Cain in the garden, the first death that was that way, but the first death that came into the world as a rebellion against you and all the things that you do for us. We know that we are, we are a fallen people, a fallen race. We ask that you lift us up and help us to know you and to know one another better and to love and to care with our whole hearts, minds, and souls according to scripture, according to what it is that you have told us over and over again. To be right with God is to go forward, to move forward, and to do positive things that are positively helpful to those around us. We ask for your blessing upon this time. We ask your blessing upon our people, wherever they may be, in whatever state or country or, or part of the world in which they reside, that they would be lifted up by the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless this day. Bless this time together. Bless this reading of your word that we might have fellowship and that we might glean something that helps us to go out into the world to help those who are lost and those who are in need. And we ask and we do all of these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Well, may God bless you and keep you as uh, we go about the business of being God's church. Uh, do it with a smile. Do it with the, with the intent of being good to somebody today and being good in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, and we will see you tomorrow on Thursday morning.